boom, blast off in my time machine. Sir, I feel like it need my zoom. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Sir, I feel like it need my zoom. Blast off, blast off. Hello everyone. So often in this world, we don't know exactly what's going on. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, hard to read between the lines. It seems that cults, organizations, and tightly woven symmetrical groups are absolutely and sincerely in control of a lot more than we give them credit for. And, uh... Tonight's guest is a rock star. He's a very, very good guy. And he's going to take us behind that curtain, behind that veil, and explain some of what goes on in these quote-unquote UFO cults, societies that aren't as well-known as others, and explain the inner workings, and explain how he got out of it. We have an amazing guy coming on here. And I can't wait to talk to him. His name is Brian Bach. And he is related to the very famous Johann Sebastian Bach. That's just one of the neat things about Brian. He's an altruistically good, good guy. And it's going to be quite the treat talking to him. On that note, I will do a little shameless self-promotion. Uh... All of the episodes of the Hyper Anomalous Esoteric Research Organization podcast are available at HeroParanormal.com, or you can also go to HeroParanormal.Podbean.com to get them in their easiest, most readily available format. You can also find us on YouTube under Hero Paranormal, or on social media. If you have a chance, go to HeroParanormal.com, hit that donate button, it's also where the archives are, and the podcasts. Don't be scared of the button. Uh, Feel free to donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you'd like a month. It's a huge help to me. For the price of a designer cup of coffee, I will bring you patron-only content above and beyond that, which you're able to hear for free. And when I say it's juicy and spicy, I mean it. So please check it out, heroparanormal.com. On that note, Mr. Brian Bach, welcome to the Hero Paranormal Podcast. Doing great, bud. How's it going with you? It's been a long time without seeing you. It has been too long, too long. It, it, was, a, it was a good time when I met you, and I, I, I wish we were still there in a way. It was a lot of fun. And um, I, I enjoy, we, we met at the Utah UFO Fest down in Cedar City, Utah, thanks to Nathan Colenshaw. And I had a riot. Yep. Yeah, it was awesome. I'm looking forward for the fifth, you know, convention there. I think it's going to be, you know, just quite a big thing for next year. So I'm looking forward for the next one. I think so, too. And I guess Nathan's in Arizona now, and he's talking about maybe doing one out there. So that that could be fun if I'm able to get out there. Yeah, so it's going to be maybe two of the ones, you know, we can arrange to go for. The one in Utah and then the one he's trying to organize in Arizona, so... We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a pleasure meeting you. You're one of the coolest guys uh, that I met, and you have a great family. <laughs> we we were actually camping right next to each other, so that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I wanted to discuss some of the less known facts about ufology. So often, it seems like everyone is very introduced to ufology through social media or through the mass media the the tv shows on the discovery channel the travel channel and the history channel and that's all well and good and very entertaining but you have a long history in ufology and a lot more unique experiences than most ufologists and i was just wondering if you could give us a little bit of background kind of let listeners know some of the more unique things that you know about ufology well, mine actually is, you know, it's, it's been a great mix of, you know, the awesome things and also very uh, bad things that happened to me as you know, while I, I, I investigated the, the phenomena. 
kind of think you know that you know whenever somebody is attracted to UFOs, it's just something that is within you. And uh, back in the day, uh, I'm about 50, I'm 50 years old. And back in the day, when I was a little kid, there was no internet. Uh, there was not much media promotion about the UFO, unless you know, it was something that was promoted on TV. Well, you would hear from, you know, folks from, like, Eric von Deniken and such. So, uh, the UFO thing, you know, you know, when I was a kid, that was something that always interested me for some reason. And growing up, you know, there was a capital group in Argentina, because that's where I grew up. I, I, and uh, some of those groups actually were dedicated to investigate the phenomena in a, in a serious way. But... My experience actually took a turn when I, I got into a group that was investigating the phenomena but also turned into a cult. And that is one of the biggest dangers that people that want to investigate the phenomena uh, run into. Um, I don't know if you remember back in the 90s, um, mid-90s, Marshall Applewhite and uh, Gates to Heaven, that was a UFO group, you know, very similar to the one that I got related in Argentina, mm -hmm. that had a very, very sad ending. Do you remember that one? Yes, yes, that I group? do. Absolutely. Well, and that was one, one of the very big dangers that anybody that you know, tries to investigate the phenomena can, can get into. It's, you know, fall into the hands of one of these groups that had no very good intention, they brainwash you, they suck you up into a faith that uh, mixes um, the cult beliefs with spiritual uh, stuff and uh, end up, you know, just destroying your life, literally. Mm -hmm. I was lucky that uh, at one point I realized what was going on and uh, the leader of the cult ended to me in suicide. And at that point, I just, you know, got my, my, my gears together um, and just, I, I, I took charge of the, the small group that we were and uh, managed to uh, get everybody into a group therapy. Um, I was just trying to make it into a nutshell, really, because everything that happened actually just, you know, goes into a ton of almost... 15 years mm -hmm. of being related and working with this group and uh, each each group and each cult actually have their own different flavor and uh, but they always target people that are in a very specific need of just you know family trouble recognition uh parental issues things like that and then they um let me find a word for it They, they prey on these people mm -hmm. and they suck them in. They're selling them an interest on something spiritual, something that is this promise of, you know, a better future, the fear of an apocalypse world, and also the cult that tells that, you know, there's the extraterrestrials, either in my case, for instance, were the ones that were going to save a planet through an evacuation plan. So to make a, you know, just a very long story short, by the end of it, when things actually never meet ends, and they were running out of excuses, uh, the leadership of this car, they were running out of excuses, it ended up you know, being more than obvious that everything was a lie, it was a scam, and uh, our leader ended up committing suicide, and almost immediately I was the only one that you know, just got grips of that, and... Uh, I try to manage the thing, you know, just gathering all the members of the group, trying to clear up, you know, what was going on. I I had some training in psychology, and I also knew somewhat, somehow how cults worked. And even though I was brainwashed into one, I was able to recognize the, the elements, and that was one of the main things that helped me out to help all the other members in the group. As I said, you know, I, I, I was able to gather them into a group therapy and then uh, with the help of a, a very, very competent group of psychologists, um, 
they took individual therapies and you know, in turn, you know, they were able to recover, wash up from the, the, the brain cult, uh, brainwashing in the cult. And well, at least, you know, none of them committed suicide. So it was, for me, actually, it was the story of success at that point. Man, that, so, that's a huge win. That is a huge win. The whole situation was that, you know, one thing that was something that was with me, you know, is that interest of investigating the UFO phenomena, I had to take almost a 20 year break out of that. You know, once the cult was dissolved, I said, enough of this. And I separated myself from any kind of field investigation until, um, well, a couple of years ago, I started, you know, just delving into it again, just, you know, getting books about it or watching YouTube videos, things, you know, in, into the internet. And, uh, well, this year I ended up going to um, this convention that Nathan organized, and I was really happy, you know, just to see that, okay, uh, there is still room for me to restart and start doing some um, research again. But this time, I'm going to be a very skeptical kid doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think you're a real hero for for that huge win, and I mean, saving the people that you did. I mean, you literally, you know, were saving lives. And I think this is a much more common thing than people think. Uh, there are these scams out there, and sadly, you know, when the extraterrestrial, like you said, is mixed very deeply with something spiritual, it can take on a life of its own. And I think when you're interested in ufology, I think it's so true that we're all kind of attracted to the phenomenon, much like a moth to a flame. It And cults, uh, Heaven's Gate, whichever, they, they do historically have the power, not all of them, but they have the power through belief to brainwash and destroy lives, literally. And I mean, the leader of the exactly. cult, it, it's spooky stuff. And I think that was a huge win on your part. So uh, mad props. I think that, that that's awesome. The The UFO phenomenon, I agree, is a very real and amazing thing. And I, I'm happy that you're putting the toe back in the water of the UFO pool, so to speak, but carefully. And that is probably how a great deal of individuals should interact with this because it is very easy, isn't it, to get sucked up into this? So this is a couple of pointers that you've got to follow up when you get into this. As you would get in any kind of investigation, even if you study the paranormal ghost, you know, through, through my life I had the chance to experience different kinds of things, you know, and things that happened during, during my life, not only with UFOs, but, you know, all related to the paranormal. Uh, this particular group that I got entangled with uh, was targeting very special people. You know, when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, I was always having, you know, these kind of visions that ended up being true things that happened in the future. Uh, I, I had recalls from different, I could say life and, and things like that. And, you know, more than once I was thinking about somebody and they just, you know, or knowing their intentions and then everything that I was having a feeling of an empath, you know, uh, things that came true. So this group was targeting people like that, that would have these kind of experiences that were empaths uh, or sensitive people that could feel other people's thoughts and, and things like that. So in my case, uh, it, it was, you know, something that, I ended up being in there, and I was lucky to get out. But as I said before, recognizing the signs of the group that you're trying to join that investigates UFOs, it, it's a very important thing. So there's a lot of local groups, there's a lot of national groups, and even if they are in the media, you know that doesn't guarantee that they cannot turn into a cult, or secretly they can be a cult. Mm -hmm. Many of the things that they do, for instance, you know, in the brainwashing process, is they create a dependency, a codependency from the group. You know, levels of you know spiritual uh, degrees 
that you can only acquire doing you know special training that would cost money. So if you follow the money trail on these groups, sometimes you can identify you know which ones are honestly doing the research and they are putting the time to investigate this phenomena that is really interesting. You know, this has been a life passion for me. And you know, whenever you see that they are just using funds and they are not clear about where the funds are flowing, that's one of those, one of the other signs that you gotta take in account. When they start mixing spiritual uh, dogma into the USO, when they are trying to say, you know, that they receive messages from a special alien group and there's no proof from that. You know, my take right now after all the experiences that I had in, in the past would be, you know, if I see something, I better throw a stone to it, and it better make the noise of tin. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, you know, to prove from a very skeptical point that, you know, it's something that has to be there and has to be real. And doing field research, we have a lot of things, you know, that we could use, uh, measuring instruments, and things that have to be taken in account to prove that, you know, whatever is happening there, it's not a natural phenomena. Uh, it, it, it's something that can be proven you know, that exists and, and so forth. So being aware of your surroundings, be aware of, uh, of the people that you're getting, you know, just associated with uh, to investigate the phenomena is always something that you have to be very aware of. Yes, and I, I agree with you that it's not just UFOs, but it is the paranormal. They're the paranormal and ufology are very connected, in my opinion. And I, I kind of find that em empathic individuals are among the best people on the planet. And it's sad that they are targeted and preyed upon. And this this UFO madness, or whatever you want to call it, it's very real. And I think many people complain about groups like MUFON and the politics involved. But I think there's larger groups, and the special training you mentioned sounds a lot like Scientology and creating that exactly. codependency. Yeah. Is, are there similarities to that? Well, you know, they, they make caption of people and they make uh, promises about, you know, just a different future, a better future, but they always require funds. They always require money. They're always milking, you know, the poor people that get cops into those groups. Uh, to do their, their own, the their, their, their bidding from the leadership. And when that happens, and there's no transparency, that's when you have to start thinking that's something else that they are not telling. And usually it's, it's that part of the big scam. Mm -hmm. You're going into the serious part of this. As you said before, everything is related. And this is like a big onion. And the more you dig in, the more layers you find out that there are, and the more ramifications everything has. And everything is interrelated. Uh, I, I can, you know, if there's a way to define it, I could call myself maybe an empath, because I've always been sensitive to, to any kind of paranormal thing. Presences, just, you know, things that could appear, or Anything like that, I would always feel it around me. And then minutes later, it happens. So being in, in that part, you know, just that's a side of my life that I cannot deny. And I have to accept that it is what it is. And as I said, after 20 years of taking, you know, a big break, I gave it that I have to take. I'm ready to start all over again and see, as, you know, from a... From a a different perspective and try to find uh, what is behind all this and what, what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I, I, I realized also is that there's nothing new after 20 years. There's very little new stuff. And uh, we're still talking about the things that happened 20, 30 years ago. There's new sightings, but it's, it's all more of the same thing. So if I take upon this and I'm going to start putting, as you said, my toe into the waters again, it's just to find out what new is happening and into that new, what is, what is real, what is just tangible, 
and uh, start working into that instead of you know recycling all the old material that we've been talking forever. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, we were talking about uh, release of information from the U.S. the U.S. government about UFOs. To the day, we're still talking about the same thing, and nothing has been released. So, my idea is just to try to find a turning point. Uh, mass media, I have done a lot, but you know, for the most part, we're still recycling old information. It's time actually to. to start doing something and work together into getting new information, new stuff that can be uh, put into the table and investigate on that. Yeah, there, there is very little new stuff. I mean, a lot of the same things we're hearing, um, they've, they've been going on forever. In fact, the, the answers from the cosmos, these prophets or messiahs, messiahs who can channel UFOs and aliens and the like, I just saw recently a YouTube channel where a guy was doing exactly that, Brian. He he goes out and he prays and he does this and that and the other thing, and UFOs appear. And I do believe that the, they are connected, and this is wholehearted, and this stuff can happen. However, there's some very scary codependency that comes along with that. And you're a rock star for the good you've done for the people who were involved in in that situation in your past. And I think that whenever somebody has that ability or they're able to convey this, this UFO belief where it becomes, it's almost like a madness. And some of us joke around that it's a a fever or a, you know, you, you have that need to like know more and it's almost like secret societies, isn't it? Yes. It works, it works that way, and there's also a lot of misinformation going around. Things are, 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 are thrown into the media, and just people see it, and they say, oh, but it's on the internet, it has to be true. And you've got to dig a little bit deeper, you've got to do your homework. When you're doing research, it's not doing research behind a computer and see what it's posted. You know, and I've seen a lot of people that do this kind of thing, you know, they recycle information that when when you are doing research, you know that where they took that information from. And they are gaining, you know, from other people's work. They repost on YouTube their own programs. And then what happens is that, you know, we get a lot of recycling and nothing new. And then you got to keep on digging deeper and deeper, and you got to be in the business and in contact with people that are doing the real network just to find out what's going on. So there's a lot of filtering that has to be done, in my opinion. There's, there's a lot of cleansing that has to be done. And you were talking about these groups, and you mentioned this guy that is posting a video on YouTube. That, you know, he channels ETs telepathically, and then the UFOs show. In that case, actually, I would really like to have a, a bunch of cameras filming in there, and uh, infrared, ultraviolet, you know, all the spectrum, just to prove that that is not a hoax. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hoax too going around, and maybe I'm, I'm a little bit too skeptical about this. That if this really happened, then and we can prove that that person that is just doing the channeling and the UFOs appear afterward, if that's real, then you know that person needs protection because there's also you know, a lot of uh, groups that are against us from knowing the truth are, are working hard on on hiding the truth, and part of it is also you know just posting that are totally misinforming people and getting everybody confused with misconceptions and and things that are not true. Yes, and it's it's so true that money seems to be such a huge motivator. That's what I liked about that festival we went to that it's a non-profit and that that always helps when you don't have that you know that money incentive why is the mixture of religion and ufology so oftenly mixed and why is it such a dangerous mix it's super hard to avoid isn't it it is really hard to avoid and i think that after 2000 years christianity is experiencing uh, a crisis and that's that's my point of view that's my faith 
So we thought something, you know, for some people that can refuel that image of Christ coming back to save us all, uh, the UFO and the potential of spirituality and having a cosmic Christ that will come in the spaceship is also very appealing. And uh, there's always been this spiritual connection because if you go back in history, you'll see that shamans and uh, any kind of spiritual leaders from, you know, just any kind of religions all around the world throughout history, they had that kind of spiritual communication with uh, spirits, ghosts, things from other realms, and that's when the UFO thing, you know, takes in, because you see them coming from the heavens, you see them popping up, you know, from under the water, and then they communicate, you know, for most males in the same way it's been told, you know, in histories throughout all around the world from thousands of years that they communicate with us in, in a telepathic way. So that's where the paranormal, uh, the paranormal issue kicks in, and uh, we we end up mixing everything all into one big mesh, and the spiritual gets intertwined with something that might not be that spiritual. It's just, you know, one of the many activities of human beings being having the possibility of communicating empathically. Mm -hmm. uh, since that is always something that is being related to the spiritual stuff because we get revelations, the prophets get revelations through inspiration and they got it in their heads through God. That's also a telepathical thing and that's a very big link that people would go for and buy from the sometimes so-called gurus and people that come and, and tell you that, you know, they are channeling uh, beings from other planets or from other dimensions, and that, you know, when everything gets a big mix-up, and, you know, most, most, most of times, you know, it ends up being a hoax. Somebody that wants to get a name, somebody that wants to make money out of it, and scamming people out of their their, their earn. Mm -hmm. It it is a lot of hoaxing, a lot of hoaxing, and like you mentioned on YouTube, a lot of that with CGI now. That's super easy to do. It seems like a lot of these groups, and I don't want to name names because there's so many of them, but it takes a pretty penny to interact with these quote unquote groups and entities and. Seems like there's a uh, you know there's always a core group of individuals and those are the ones that spend the most money. You mentioned indeed, uh huh, and you also mentioned indeed. I said indeed. Yeah, go on. Indeed, there's there's a lot of groups, and sometimes you know as I said before, you know you gotta follow the money. I cannot name names either because uh, people are really so happy, and even though we have the benefit here in the states of you know freedom of speech. If I say, you know, that I believe or I think, you know, somebody can sue me for naming names, but people can recognize these groups and these individuals are acting uh, in the name of money rather than being serious about everything. And I'm not against, you know, making money out of this. For instance, you know, if I go to a convention, I can participate of the thing, but I can fill my own book just to find my reason. And I, I would be okay with that. That's, that's a different matter. But when somebody is making money out of uh, innocent people, gullible people, and somebody is selling them, you know, just bad information, and they make a cult or a group that generates codependency through their members into a, a, a one leader that is just telling them, you got to be this, you got to do that, that's when I, I get the goosebumps. That's when I say, there's something there that is just not going right, you see. So you got to use a lot of discernment and follow the, the money trail at all times. Yeah, I can't agree more. Also, Brian, the paranormal, spirits, ghosts, ETs, I know you've had a lot of experiences. Switching gears just a little bit and jumping into that. What are some of the most unique experiences you had that were sincere or that made an impression on you through the years? Uh, well, you remember that we talked about uh, 
King Walker Ranch. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it's just, you know, close to home. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I've driven by the area several times, you know, just uh, being close to the area, just, you know, going to Vernal on night trips, you know, just fishing or camping trips. Being close by, you know, when I went to, um, to camp, you know, just past strawberry and um, starvation. And for instance, one of the, the, the most interesting things, years ago I heard about Skin Walker Ranch and everything that was going on there, and we talked about that in August when we met at the, at the convention. And one thing that happened to me is that, you know, just I, I was just quiet in my, in my room once after watching this, and I had kind of a remote viewing of the place. And um, my remote viewing of the place was that, you know, everything had shifted. And what was happening in one place, now it was happening on the other. And then, you know, when, I, when we met and we started to talk about the issue, and I shared with you my experience, it was confirmed by the other people that were sitting at the table that everything was shifted. It was just a big surprise to me. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching uh, some videos about the same thing on YouTube, and uh, another confirmation came by, and it was just, you know, saying, you know, that everything that was happening inside the ranch now is happening outside or somewhere else. So that actually came like a big wow, a big aha moment that that remote viewing that I had a couple of years ago about the things shifting and not being on the same place as they were happening before ended up being true. Yeah. And throughout my life, I had several experiences like that. Um, Getting presences and and things, you know, I was doing some field research many, many years ago in the city of Victoria in in the province of Santa Rio back in Argentina. And the same thing happened. You know, we were in a hill that uh, was reported, you know, that there was a lot of UFO sightings in there. And just getting out of that hill, you know, we have like a five-mile um, walk uh, back to our camping site. And I was feeling that, you know, just eerie presence all the way. And we finally made it back, you know, just to our camping site. And then the following day, uh, there were, you know, just, we, we didn't see anything, but the following day, people were reporting, you know, sightings and uh, weird things happening, you know, around our houses and, you know, in that area. So, it was that kind of things, you know, that always were with me. So, I couldn't think point exactly one that was more than the other one. But one of the most interesting lately is just, you know, when I decided to delve back and put, you know, just go back into, into the business of, UFOs, and and as you said, you know, just put my foot into the water again, and then, you know, we met, and I was able to confirm something that happened, you know, long ago, about the shift that is happening right now, uh, and Skinwalker Ranch. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there is definitely a shift, and it's, it's, it's a weird one, and You know, the remote viewing is so very real, Brian, and the view you shared with us was pretty cool. You're such a great guy. I wish our listeners knew you the way I do. Luckily, you talking with me and and that, I think they're getting to know you a bit and learning some valuable tools and red flags to watch out for if they get involved with these groups or they're thinking about it. And I can't thank you enough for coming on. Are there any final thoughts or ideas Brian, for our listeners, before we let you go? Just be cautious. You know, uh, people usually, when they go into this, it's just, you know, something that is so exciting. You know, the paranormal is something that, you know, just can branch into so many things. And, you know, you've got so much excitement getting into something that is not an everyday thing. Uh, keep your feet on the ground. Mm-hmm. Always look for, for, you know, red flags. Uh, be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of the people that you relate with. Uh, just don't mix the spiritual with the UFO because one thing is just, you know, purely research and the other one is your spiritual beliefs. And they go totally separate ways. 
in my experience, you know, they are not related. And whatever you do, you know, just use the buddy system. Never go alone. Never leave the group. Because this is also a very serious thing. You don't know what you're dealing with. So, um, always you got to be careful, you know, where, what, what are you getting to? Not only just, you know, going into the hills alone, uh, or to the places, you know, that you don't know, that you don't, you also do it on, in a group. And, you know, do your homework. And there's nothing wrong on, on just, you know, Googling or investigating the people you're, you're relating with or, you know, leaders of groups. Just be aware of those, you know, when they try to sell you some information. Just, you know, go to the source. Man, you're so right. And you've devoted so much time to the effort. And I appreciate you giving people these tools and the heads up. I hope to talk to you soon, Brian. And blessings, my man. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. And just, you know, looking forward to talk to you again about this thing. Maybe next time, you know, I can bring you some uh, material on, on some of the, the research that I've been doing and, you know, what I was able to find. I would love it. I would love to go out camping in the desert again. It was a blast. Awesome, man. All right, take Take care. Yes, sir. The real deal, as real in the field as they get. He's a good guy. Mr. Brian Bach. And we will continue to bring you the best heroes in the field. I mean, a guy literally saving lives and uh, getting people out, including himself, of UFO cults. There is a dark side to this, and it's important to be able to see that. You mix religion and UFOs, and you get a very toxic and dangerous mix that can quite literally kill. So uh, I really appreciate having him. So do your best and stay in touch with Hero Paranormal Podcast. Go to heroparanormal.com. Feel free to check out the archive button, which is also the donate button. And uh, you can get all our archives there. You can also get more Hero Paranormal at heroparanormal.podbean.com, where you can get an archive of all of our free episodes. If you want patron-only episodes, definitely become a patron. And I don't mind a little shameless self-promotion. Uh, Don't be scared of that donate button. Shoot us a buck. Shoot us five bucks for the price of a designer cup of coffee. We'll keep bringing you the heroes of the paranormal and ufology fields. And there is a lot of strange stuff going on, so keep in touch. Brian Bach, a genuinely good guy. And not just that. He actually has an email address for anybody that is involved in something that they're not quite sure of, they're worried about cult-like behavior, any of these things, he has a special email address that I am going to give you. It is T-A-B as in boy, S, paranormal, at gmail.com. That's T-A-B as in boy, S, paranormal, at gmail.com. And that stands for truth about BS, paranormal. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, he definitely has the skill set and the tools available to help you point out the red flags if you are in a cult and trying to get out of it, or if you are being drawn into something that is cult-like and you want more information about it. Give Brian a call. He's in it for the altruistic reasons, not wanting the things most others want. So, uh, if you are in a state of need, Please don't be scared to use that email address. Brian can definitely help you out. Can't thank him enough. Um, He is just a wholeheartedly altruistic good guy. So on that note, keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, but don't forget to take a look around. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like an Evi scene. Blast off.